What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Campaign Grind Podcast. I am Pedro Diaz, I am your host, and this is the Campaign Grind. We are here today with Mr. Ray Valdez. What's up, brother? Good to see you. Thank you, man. Uh, we actually got a very neat episode lined up for you guys today. We're going to be talking about a lot of different topics. Um, most importantly, about messaging, uh, tactics that you could use in your campaign, and most importantly, the mistakes that a lot of local candidates make in their campaign. Um, as always, as I always start every single episode, guys, this podcast is for everybody. We do not discriminate, whether you're an entrepreneur, a politician, a consultant, a lot, whatever it is you are, you're an alien. Whatever it is you are, I guarantee you're going to find some gold nuggets, some useful information that you're going to be able to implement into your personal life, your everyday life, your business, or even in your campaign. So the only thing I do ask is we do not charge a thing for this podcast. The only thing I do ask is if you find any value whatsoever, please share this episode with your friends, family, and colleagues. So without further ado, we're going to stop talking BS and we're going to dive right in. In. We actually, like I said, we got our host over here, Mr. Ray Valdez. How's everything going, man? Very good. Yeah. Very good. Just uh, watching the uh, matches, the boxing matches uh, with yep. Trump and the uh, house. And, uh, and locally here, we have uh, Joe Carroyo and Alfie Leon oh, yeah. for the city of Miami mayorship. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, we just had the uh, installation. For Manolo Reyes for District 4, City of Miami Commission. Yeah. And also in the afternoon, the, we had the installation for uh, Mr. Francis Suarez. The new mayor, baby. The new mayor, a young new mayor. Absolutely, you uh, got a lot of great things. Bright and shiny with a lot of new ideas and prospects Absolutely. for his uh, mayorship again. And, uh, you know, we wish him all the best and uh, may God bless the City of Miami. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, he did talk about the runoff election here in the city of Miami. We do have a runoff election happening next week, next Tuesday. Early voting starts Friday, starts today, Saturday and Sunday, um, and ends on Sunday. Election day is on Tuesday. So if you live in the city of Miami, if you live in District 3, which is Little Havana, the roads, uh, part of the Shenandoah area, make sure you go out and vote. Whether you vote for Frank Car uh, Joe Carollo or you vote for Alfie Leon, the most important thing is that you go out and vote. Um, and it's actually a very, very, very physical runoff election. I think that the runoff was actually determined last week, you know, who was going to be in the, in the runoff. I don't know if you guys remember, uh, last week mm -hmm. we talked up about uh, the second place winner actually winning by 16 or 17 votes. So. Caroyo's campaign actually came out swinging because this week, I don't know how many mailers we've received already, basically talking bad and pounding the hell out of his opponent. Um, so I don't know how they had that all organized. I guess they probably had pieces ready for one opponent and pieces ready for another opponent, but they just came out this week swinging, and I don't know what's going to happen. It's going to be a very interesting very uh, strong campaign. Very strong, very physical, very, very dirty, and I love it, baby. Um, but well, that's what happens <laughs> most yeah. campaigns anyway. But most it's campaigns are subtle dirtiness and clearly open. Absolutely dirtiness. Absolutely. So, um, well, before we actually get, we're going to talk about this a little later on in the episode. But before we start talking about the different topics, as always, this episode of the Campaign Grind is brought to you by Global Compass Real Estate. For all of your real estate needs, give them a call 786-326-8885, Global Compass Real Estate, 786-326-8885. Um, so, Ray, the first topic we're going to be talking about today is, is text messaging the new email? Okay, and a lot of people are asking, what in the world are you talking about? How is text messaging the new email? When we first started in campaigns, the big thing was email. Yeah. Okay. Um, and big from time. and and from before before we started this episode, you were telling me that before email, it was actually faxing. Mm -hmm. so campaigns use a lot of faxing as well, faxing over the campaign propaganda. So and before that, we had the horse and carriage. No, not the horse and, door and carriage. Knocking. And then the door pigeons. Knocking. The pigeons. The you you door write door. the note and you tie it to the pigeon's leg and have them fly away, or the messenger birds, whatever the hell you call them. But um, but yeah. So so it's it's is text messaging the new email? What are your thoughts? Well, um, really, that uh, you know, social media. It's become uh, such a strong uh, 
uh, you know, um, uh, tool for you know for business, for politics, for everything. So you know when you're talking about um, text messaging, you have to talk about Twitter, you have to talk about Facebook, and so on. They're all different media, and the fact is that a lot of people use all of them. Or you know, like to me, uh, you know, texting and uh, Twitter and Facebook. Uh, you know, I I couldn't do without them. I you couldn't do, do without it. texting, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, practically every minute of the day, for some reason, business-wise, politics, uh, communication with you know, uh, other people in campaigns or other issues. Uh, uh, you know, you got to utilize social media. Yeah. No, so, I, I agree. I agree. So, so how it's very you, intense, very direct, and that's what I today. like about it. Yeah. 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 So let me ask you, Ray. How old are you? Well, that is. And I'm secret. sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to ask you in front of everybody that's well, watching. Before the Mayflower. Uh huh. I had arrived already, so I'm not going to give you any more. Uh, <laughs> All right. So, so. <laughs> If you're telling us that you rely on text messaging and social media, and guys, yeah. I'm not lying to you, to get yeah. Ray on the phone, it's very difficult. I call him, I call him, I call him, sometimes he answers, sometimes he doesn't. But the only way he responds, and fairly quickly, is through text messaging. And yeah. you're talking about this guy right next to me. So in your campaign, there's no reason why you should not be able to implement True. a text message campaign. The same way you're going to be implementing direct mail, phone banking, uh, email campaigns, social media campaigns, you're going to have to make sure you implement a text message campaign. The reason why is because it's a lot more personal. Um, there are I'm, I'm going to uh, mention something that was mentioned to me and I, you know, and I was very surprised though I have used, uh, when I ran, I used a lot of social media, I, yeah. I, you know, I used to, I was uh, doing a lot of campaigning with Facebook and tweeting and everything else because I liked it and I thought that I was a very inexpensive tool and again you know going right to the individual so that was very important to me not counting on a lot of funds to run my campaign and uh, uh, my opponent had like three four hundred thousand dollars and i was in the in the two digit figure you know so uh, i would say uh you know for a political campaign you should use all the tools that I know you use but for example in a district where you have maybe 30,000 a, a proved voters people that have voted on at least a last one two or three elections I would say that probably as many as 25,000 of those people subscribe to social media absolutely in the way of text messaging in the way of Facebook and Twitter absolutely so absolutely. if you have 30,000 voters in a district to be able to reach 25,000 because they use one three five of this, uh, uh, you know, um, social media uh, uh, facilities, tools, it's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. It's amazing. Absolutely. The amount of individuals, and I think we spoke about this in a, in a previous episode, how many senior citizens and older voters, okay, that one candidate would think, listen, they have no Facebook, they're not on Twitter, they're not on Facebook, they're not on this, they're not on any social media whatsoever. We talked about this in a previous episode, yeah. and, and you kind of debunked that, um, because not only are you on social media and using Twitter and all this new technology, but so is everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just that's just a social media thing. We're not talking. We're not going to go into social media again. But the text messaging, I think, is actually a very important factor in any campaign. It's a mm -hmm. lot more personal.
people like it it's easier for for you to get in front of the the in front of the voter and most importantly it's a lot cheaper um, whether you're doing it on your by yourself on your mobile cell phone because you can because there's not that many voters you need to reach out to or if you're using some type of automated uh, text message program or anything like that they're not that expensive so I personally think that text messaging is the new norm I think text messaging is is the future but it's actually going to be replaced by something else uh, pretty pretty soon the same way email uh, has kind of taken a back seat to text messaging uh, as well as you know faxing before that and and those birds bird notes uh, uh, before that but um but that's that so 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 you agree that text messaging should be included a text message strategy and campaign should be included in your political campaign Imminent. it's a very it's one of the most important tools today I would say I agree. Uh, in a political campaign. I agree. Yeah. Like even the other day, we were we actually uh, recently purchased a new car, and um, you know we, we saw the car, we liked the car, you know we left. They didn't want to give us the price that we wanted to pay for, it. and then the, the the gentleman actually texted us back the next couple of days. He didn't call us. He he texted us. So texting right now is actually normal. You know it's not what it was a few years ago where it was very improper or, or, yeah. or impersonal. Right now, it's it's texting. People don't want to talk on the phone, and it's not that they don't want to talk on the phone. I think that it's it's they're too busy to talk on the phone, or they're too busy, or they pretend to be too busy. But people prefer yeah. the text message because if you're going to tell somebody something bad, they'd much rather say it through text message where you don't got to hear the other person's response on the phone. Well, you know, also, you know, um, personal calling. Unless it is a uh, a uh, you know a, uh, what you call it a pre can presentation that is used a lot in uh, in campaigns that you have a robocall call you and you know give you some kind of a pitch yeah. and whatever uh, text messaging limits also your time time is so valuable and you can do so much you know you can do three times as much work text messaging than uh, calling yeah when you call somebody you gotta introduce yourself. You gotta say hello. How are you? How you know? How are the kids or whatever? And you do. You know, have a. You have usually you have a period of protocol. Yeah. You have a time that you have. You know, uh, to introduce it. a text messaging. You go right onto the point. There is no additional conversation that you need to you know to handle uh, in the same period of time. So, you know, I would say probably you can do five text messages while you do one phone call. Absolutely. You know, so. Absolutely. No, I agree. So I'm glad that we're on the same page there. Guys, once again, if you have any questions whatsoever, please give us a call 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010, or shoot us an email, pedro at diazcampaigns.com, pedro at diazcampaigns.com. I see that we got uh, Judge Michelle Gonzalez Paulson uh, watching us on Facebook Live. We got State Representative Danny Perez watching us online. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Um, I appreciate the love, I appreciate the support. Guys, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, if you are following us on Facebook, you are watching Instagram Live, Periscope, or whatever social media platform you're watching us live on, you know, comment, ask us any questions, we'll be more than happy to, to answer them for you. Um, the next topic we're going to be talking about, Ray, is actual mistakes local candidates make. And it's not only local candidates, what I've come to realize is that this is actually first-time candidates, okay? Um, and the first point, one of the mistakes that they make is that they are too focused on raising money. When I meet with candidates, I tell them, listen, the thing you need to do is canvas, get your name out there, meet the voters, figure out what the issues are, and two, raise money. A lot of the first-time candidates, especially first-time candidates, they just focus 100% on raising money. Why? Because they think if they raise money, they're going to get elected. Now, the reality is the only way that you get elected is by votes. And the last time I checked, money doesn't vote. So money helps you get the, your message across, helps you get in front of as many voters as possible, but it doesn't vote. So you need to go out there, put your efforts in knock on doors, canvas, talk to the voters. If you don't have enough money to do a poll and figure out what the issues are within your community, canvas, canvas, knock on doors, talk to voters, figure out what their issues are, and that's how you're gonna determine what is most important for them. So they focus way too much money on raising money. Ray actually ran for office a couple of years ago. First time he ran for office. Ray, how much time 
did you focus on raising cash when you first ran for office? Well, uh, truly speaking, I my campaign. You know, I uh, when I met with you, let's, I'm going to start from there, if I may. When I met with you, you told me, uh, and I remember very clearly, write down here the names of 10 people that you know, that you can reach out to them and ask for a donation. Yeah. And uh, again, following that, uh, that, that rule, I would say raising funds is so, so, so important. It is. Definitely, because is. that's going to be a facilitator. It's going to be a vehicle for you yeah. to do everything else. However, uh, I think that uh, that's got to be part of a general strategy. You the fundraising. Have, yeah. The fundraising has got to be part of the whole thing. It cannot be just an independent thing. It's fundraising has got to be a part of your whole a campaign, brand, image, whatever you want to call it. So when you're doing fundraising, you got to, you know, you have to fundraise, you have to have a budget, you got to know, you know, how much you're going to spend on your media, uh, printed media, TV, you know, and what you're going to do, what, yeah. what the direction of your, well, that's, that's why we need you to prepare a strategy for Absolutely. the campaign. Not a strategy, but also a timeline for your campaign. What well, you should be that's doing, part of the strategy. Be when? Because being timely is so important. I yeah. learned that with you, yeah. true fact. Yeah. Is that, uh, you know, how important it is when the absentee ballots are going to come out. Correct. How important it is. When should you be knocking on doors? When should you be going out to, you know, maybe the local organizations in your community and meet, meeting your constituents face to ba face and so on? Yeah. But it's a whole realm of, of issues and things that you have to consider as part of the whole package. But fundraising, I say, is imminent. It's so important, you know. I agree. I agree. But I think that first-time candidates, any candidate, should not focus so much time on fundraising. Money will come in. You just need to start putting some work into it. Um, the second point is that they start off too slow. And this is really more for the first-time candidates. And I believe the reason why is because I was a first-time candidate once, was or is because you're, you're very shy, you're very timid, you're not exactly sure what to expect and that's kind of why I believe that first-time candidates start off too slow and then what ends up happening, you start off too slow, I'm gonna start picking up next week, next month or whatever and then it just doesn't happen. You know, one of the first things to come out in any, any and the, one of the first things to come out in any election are the absentee ballots. So you're gonna have to make sure that you've already started well before those absentee ballots are mailed and most importantly before they're received. So you can't start off too slow. Once you're gonna start, once you decide you're gonna run for office, you need to hit the ground running. You need to basically go 100% um, because if you start slowing down or if you start off slow, it's gonna take you forever to get your ass in gear and start rolling, especially just in time for those absentee ballots once they're mailed and most importantly, once they're received. Um, you agree with that? I agree with that. Also, it, it is so important. Time, time, time. And again, I have to repeat, and I'm very grateful uh, because, uh, uh, you know, the timelines are so important. Yes. And I learned that because, remember, you might have one, two, or three other candidates running for your same seat. There's always going to be somebody out there that wants it more than you do. And who is knocking on more doors than you are? Yep. Who is doing more social media than you are? Who is getting uh, in front of the face of those voters in your district or those people that are going to vote or not vote for you? And it is very important because yeah. people make a commitment. So, you know, that texting and that uh, uh, absentee ballot timing and, uh, you know, having been able to reach out to the voters in your area of your election and that and that they have a name recognition for you that they, that you have been able to go to them 
and 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 reach out to them for their commitment to vote for you. Yeah. That is so important because they're going to have two, three, four people on their face. And there's got to be a reason that you're there. If you're, Absolutely. you know, I always believe that you're there first, you're there early, and you do your job and hard work. And let me tell you, running for office it's not easy. is not like having three jobs. I agree. You know, and I so, agree. you know, that's seven days a week, yep. a morning, afternoon, and night. And uh, you got to be dedicated. So, you have to. You, you know, have to. You, not only do you have to be dedicated, but you have to make sure that your family is dedicated and in this with you 100%. The third point, the third thing that I believe uh, that they make the biggest mistakes on is they don't reach out to key influencers first. And one of the reasons, especially for first time candidates, that they don't reach out to key influencers is one, they may not know who the key influencers are. But two, if they do know who the key influencers are, they don't have that. Um, I guess the knowledge, they don't know exactly what to expect once going into, into that meeting with those key influencers. They may think that these key influencers may just blow them off because for whatever reason. The reality is, if you're reaching out to this particular influencer, um, they've been there, they've done that, or they know exactly how this game is run. So you should have, you should really be, you shouldn't be scared of anything to be quite frank with you. Um, if they have an interest in your campaign, if they like your idea, they like your platform, chances are they're going to go off behind you and introduce you to more uh, influencers. Um, so, listen, the best thing you need to do is get out of your comfort zone, talk to these people. These are the people that will, one, be able to help you raise cash, and two, be able to help you get your name out in the community. Um, not only key influencers in person, but also if you're doing a social media campaign, not many people do this, and this is actually a very, you know, uh, a, a very neat trick that we do for our campaigns. And if you're watching this podcast, it, it's this is I charge a lot of money for this information. It's these online social media influencers. These online social media influencers, basically, what they are is just like um, like these on, uh, these personal influencers. Online social media influencers are basically people that have Instagram accounts, Facebook accounts uh, within your niche. So in this particular case, in politics or you know in Miami or in government or anything like that, they have a huge following on social media. And then what you got to do is basically go out to those influencers, let them know exactly what you're doing. Some of these social media influencers do charge you some money to promote your posts or to promote your stories on, on their social media platforms, but it is a great way, a great and somewhat inexpensive way to get your message across to like-minded people within one your niche and two your community so if you just heard that i charge a lot of money for that uh for our candidates so you just got some free information um but they don't reach out to key influencers first dive off the deep end talk to the key influencers Make sure they're on board with your campaign. That's going to be less work you're going to have to do where you could actually focus on knocking on more doors. And like you said, reaching out to key influencers is so important <clears throat> because, you know, you're not the only one out there. Nope. Always remember that. Nope. that uh, you know, you're going to have to compete. Not only your, your candidacy is going to have to be firm, dedicated, and so on, but you're going to have to compete for those votes. You're going to have to compete. Com compete for those funds. Yeah. You're going to have to compete for the people who, who in your community can uh, influence money and voters to come your way. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, if I may take one moment, I wanted to congratulate uh, today uh, Senator, uh, uh, the Senator for New Jersey mm -hmm. uh, uh, because of his, uh, uh, his, uh, is really being successful in his effort not to get convicted for things that you know were not really uh, appropriate. Appropriate, and that that uh, that uh, I think that was all politically influenced. Absolutely, to have mm -hmm. uh, uh, him in court all this time, and uh, I know he's very grateful. Uh, that he's, you know, triumph in that effort. Absolutely. And I wanted to say, uh, eat your heart out, Marco Rubio. <laughs> I'm going to have a, a little water. Some water. But, um, guys, as he takes a sip of water, 
Once again, this episode of the Campaign Grind is brought to you by Global Compass Real Estate. For all of your real estate needs, give them a call, 786-326-8885. Global Compass Real Estate, 786-326-8885. Um, so moving on to the final three mistakes that local candidates, or not really local, but first-time candidates make. Yard signs go up too late. If you're following this podcast or this episode of the Campaign Grind, you know very well that I am not a big fan of yard signs because yard signs do not vote. Um, but they are necessary in every single campaign. The reason why is it builds awareness. Um, you do not want to put your yard signs up the weekend before election day on Tuesday. So you need to make sure that you have a, a nice timeline, a nice strategy as to when you're going to put up your yard signs. Um, it helps bring awareness. It also helps out with these undecided voters. If, I go, if I'm an undecided voter, I go out to throw out my garbage and I see that my neighbor has two or three signs of your campaign. Chances are, once I go into that voting booth and I receive, or I receive my absentee ballot, I'm going to go off and vote for who my neighbors are supporting. Mm -hmm. Even though I may not know who you are, but I am an undecided voter. So it does influence some votes. What are your take? What um, is your take? You know, uh, in Miami-Dade County, to speak about our community, and I know that is so throughout the country anyway, but in Miami-Dade County, there's 34 municipalities, and and uh, a, a lot of those municipalities, or most of those municipalities, have different rules and regulations regarding when your signs can go up. Yeah. And some communities, your sign can all go up uh, before 90 days. Uh, they will penalize you. They'll pick up all your signs, the city inspectors, they will pick up your signs and they might charge you a uh, penalty. Other communities, they have a license that you have to take out. A bond. Uh, sometimes it's a small fee, uh, you know, like Hialeah, I think it's like $25 or things like that. No, Hialeah, I think it's 500 500 Oh, really? Oh, well, I gotta, we got to talk to Carlos Hernandez. That's too high for those. I, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think, it's, I think it's 500, 500. I think. Okay, well, anyway, there is a fee in many communities for you to put your signs out. Uh, at the same time, it has to do with, uh, you know, uh, clarity. Your sign should mm -hmm. really be, you know, you should be very concerned with the image. It's like, you know, having a suit on with dirty shoes. You want to have a nice sign out there because uh, people, uh, you, that's the biggest exposure you're going to get yeah. on a daily basis for people driving around, driving by in the community, in the district where you're running. And that sign shouldn't be so crowded. It should, you know, it should state your name uh, and, uh, and, the, uh, and this, the seat that you're uh, campaigning for and the number. Your number is very important. You can tell people, hey, you know, like uh, uh, my number was 65, coincidentally. Of course, I'm much younger than that. But is um, a lot of people, especially first time candidates, what happens is that they want to have their, their picture on, on the signs. And you guys got to remember, once you put your picture on a sign, you are basically reducing the amount of space to have the most important thing, which is your name and your punch mm -hmm. number, your ballot number. Um, and you know, I'm not a big fan of putting the, the picture on signs because mm. one, it costs a lot more money and then two, you can't get the bigger picture across, which is the name and the punch number. Well, I, I like my picture on, on my signs yeah. because I'm a good looking guy and I want uh, people to go by and they look at it. Who's that movie star? I know, I know, you know? but I know, but, but that's you. But then, you know, when people go out to vote, you know, they're going to remember your face, but they don't remember your name they don't remember your name or your number. But you know what happens? Just kidding. But you know what happens is that when 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 you have your face, you know when people go out to vote, yeah. your face does not show up not on bit. the ballot. No. So it's just your name and your phone and your yeah. your punch number. So that's why I'm not a big fan of the signs. Signs don't vote. I don't like having the picture on the signs. But you do need to have them up in yeah. a timely manner to build awareness. And a back sign. That that sign says what it needs to say. It stands out. Correct. And uh, you know, and and uh, I may say, uh, I've known a couple of uh, your clients that uh, actually even discussed the fact with me. They didn't agree with what you had fixed 
I told you about it. What? Uh, well, I don't like the sign that Pedro fixed for me. I don't like the color. This. Uh, I said, listen. I have the ugliest signs. I said, listen. Let Pedro do Pedro's job. Well, those persons they ran tough, tough, ca tough campaigns yep. against tough candidates and Absolutely. incumbents, and they got elected. Yes, they did. And I remember even working with them, putting those signs up. It was these were countywide, uh, countywide, countywide race, yeah. campaigns. That's a horrifying thing. A countywide campaign is not a district. It's not a you know state representative or a state commission. It's huge. Yep. yep. Countywide campaign in Miami Dade County reaches out to thirty four municipalities. So I remember two, three, four o'clock in the morning we'd be out there uh, putting signs up, and uh, every time I put a sign up, I remember telling her and him, I say, did you notice something? Remember, you wanted to. Take those signs down. You didn't want those designs and so on. Look at that sign. Sometimes in a fence, people, there may be half a dozen candidates, two or three running for your same seat. And uh, when that sign went up and I looked at it, I said, son of a that Pedro, you know, that those signs would stand out amongst that half a dozen signs. Those were the signs that stand out the absolutely, most. Absolutely, absolutely. And I have to, you know, congratulate you for that kind of work. No, what, what, excellent. What you got to remember is, especially with signs, it's people have, you know, less than thirty seconds to actually look at the sign. So if you yeah. clutter it up with with picture, with phone number, email, all that stuff, it's it's exactly. gonna get too busy. People aren't gonna see it. We got to remember, people are driving by. 15, 30, 40, 50 miles an hour. They're not gonna stop there and no. see. Hey, what what's that say? They don't care about that. So moving on. The next thing is that they complicate their message too much. A lot of first time candidates, what I've come to realize is that they complicate it way too much. This sounds like a very complicated thing. Running for office sounds very complicated. Winning an election sounds very complicated, but it's not. You gotta kiss it. Like I like to say, kiss it. Keep it simple, st stupid. Keep it simple and stupid. Kiss it. So basically it's, it's, don't complicate it too much. You don't gotta make it complicated whatsoever. Um, talk about the issues. Like I said, if you don't have the money in your campaign to do a poll and figure out what the issues are within your community, that's fine. Canvas, knock door to door, talk to the residents, talk to the voters, figure out exactly what's bothering them and how you can improve it once you get elected to either a council seat, a commission seat, a mayor, state rep, whatever it is. Talk to your community. They're going to tell you exactly what they want, exactly how you can help them, and then that's how you build your message and your and your and your platform. Don't go and say, "Well, I'm going to do this and that and this and that." And you're going to bore the people. You got to remember, once you start canvassing on doors and talking to people, knocking on doors, they're just getting home from work. They're tired. They got to cook dinner. They're not going to want to stand in, in in their front door for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, talking to you about you know what you're going to do, how you're going to do it. You know, get to the point, talk to them, see exactly what their issues are, and they're going to tell you exactly what they want to hear, exactly how you can help them once you get elected. Don't complicate it. Kiss it. Keep it simple and stupid. Ray, I agree with you. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Well, we gotta so we gotta start. We gotta talk to Iris and, and talk about topics that, that we don't agree with because you know you agree with something I agree with something. Well, we gotta start know, even though some controversy, agree, man. I think that we, you know even though we agree, we uh, have a way to expand, uh, you know, from uh, each other's ideas or you know relation to the same matter, you know. Okay. So uh, all right. So, so I'm glad you, you agree. All right. So the last point or the last mistake. Not the last mistake. Everybody makes, especially first-time candidates, they make a lot of mistakes. But the last point I want to talk about is they do not leverage technology. A lot of first-time candidates, and once again, this is this second portion of, of the podcast or the episode is about uh, first-time candidates and the mistake they make. They do not leverage technology. The reason why is because they think it's the traditional stuff: knocking on doors, canvassing, mailing, phone calls, and stuff like that. Texting. Stalking people on social media, 
uh, sending a message on Facebook, sending a message on Instagram, you know, they, they forget about that. They don't want to do that because they think it's going to be too aggressive. At the end of the day, you need to be very aggressive. When we solicit our clients, I'm not going to lie to you guys, you know, we send them emails, we follow up with phone calls, we send them another email, we follow up with another phone call, we do that three times. And then we add them on Facebook, we send them messages on Facebook. They're going to respond sometime. Eventually, they're going to respond. And then once they respond, we actually, we are very successful and we meet with them and then 90 something percent of the time about 94 to 95 percent of the time they sign on board with us because we are very persistent so you need to do the same exact thing with your campaign you need to be persistent you need to be hungrier than the, than the than your opponent you need to grind and do stuff that other people are not doing so follow up mainers work phone calls work canvassing definitely works because like i say all the time Everybody, all these voters, they want to see the sweat dripping off your forehead. They want to smell you. They want to touch you. They want to know exactly who you are. So canvassing is definitely a number one thing you got to do. Phone banking definitely works. Mailing, most importantly. Um, but also, do things that other candidates aren't going to do because they don't feel comfortable doing, which is not stalking. I'm not saying go stalk the freaking person. But add them on Facebook. Send them a message on Facebook. Comment on their posts. You know, get in front of them. It's, it, it's, I'm very big. I'm a very big believer of this of omnipresence. Be everywhere yeah. when it comes to this particular person. And it's, it's, it's hard. It takes a lot of time, but you need to do it in order to be successful, especially when you're running for office. Yeah. So they don't leverage technology. I think that your campaign not only should implement, uh, um, the old strategies, mailing, canvassing, phone banking, so on and so forth, but also have a complete different campaign for new technology, social media, text messaging, robocalls, yeah. all these things that don't cost that much money that will get you in front of the voters. Yeah. I um, I agree with you. Once again, however, however I want to say, you know, um, uh, we run out on uh, Facebook. Oh, yeah, already. the Facebook. Uh, guys, if you're, if, if you're watching on Facebook, I am sorry because my, my phone ran out of battery. You should. Um, we still, we're still live on, on Instagram. We're still live on Periscope, and we're definitely here on YouTube. So And, uh, and YouTube, uh, iTunes? Uh, well, that's the podcast. That's the okay, audio. Okay. He's, a, anyway, he's an old dude, so. Anyway, I just want to, you know, I want to put put my half a cent in. Uh, Not even two cents. <laughs> no. Um, you know, what you're saying with regards to social media is so important. But also, you know, you have to give a lot of consideration to your district, to your area, to your constituents. You know, what what the, what are they supposed to most, you know? As I, I, like in my district, you know, I did uh, truly, uh, I, I, you know, amazing. I, I miss myself. I don't think that I could repeat that, uh, that, you know, campaign again the same way. But I was doing eight or ten radio programs a week. And that was very tough. Some of them I... Uh, I wear my own radio programs, and uh, you know, and, and I was an invited guest to at least six or eight other radio programs and so on. And uh, and I did a lot of Facebook and reaching out to the community and so on and so forth. But you know, you, uh, with your social media and as per you, you know, following uh, your concept, you have to look in your community and see what there's a lot of people that listen to the radio, the early people. Absolutely. They, a lot of times they don't like to watch the news. They don't like, you know, they think that all these crimes and police and things are going on make them nervous, you know. So they don't like looking at that. Uh, they don't like looking much at uh, political programs today, like, uh, for example, Fox News or some of these programs because they get too excited. They got blood, high blood pressure, you know, pacemakers. Uh, past heart attacks, like in my case, all these things, you know, they, they, uh, <laughs> you know, yeah. and so on. And so, you know, we avoid all these things that stress us out. Yeah. So it is nice, though, when you can reach them on a TV commercial or you can reach them on a radio program that they listen to here in the, uh, in my district, it was a, a district, a state a house, District 113. Uh, there's a lot of elderly people, yeah. and they listen a lot to different uh, La Poderosa radio, Radio Mambi, you know, and so on and so forth. And they have these set programs that have ran for years, 
so they uh, they subscribe to those programs you know so that's something that you have to do you have Absolutely. to check to see you know what channels your constituents watch most if you're going to do some TV commercials uh, you know if you're going to do radio you know maybe uh, what radio programs you should sponsor with your advertising yeah and so on and so forth very important no absolutely no absolutely so those are those are basically the six points that i could come up with uh, for this particular uh, episode um to recap mistakes that first-time candidates or local candidates make you know they're too focused on raising money i'm not saying not to focus on raising cash but you do need to canvas uh they start too slow don't start off slow. Once you decide to, to, to run for office, you got to start with uh, basically hitting the ground running. Um, you don't want your opponents to catch up. You want them to basically start catching up to you. Um, they don't reach out to key influencers, not only community influencers, but also, like I said, social media influencers within your community, within your niche, whatever it is you're doing. Reach out to them. Make sure you get to them first so they don't have a, a, a commitment with somebody else before you reach to them. Yard signs go up too late. Like I said, I'm not a big fan of yard signs, but they do help build awareness. Also, undecided voters, they see their neighbors are supporting a particular candidate. When they go out to vote, chances are they're going to go out and vote for you because their neighbors have your signs on their lawn. Message is too complicated. Once again, don't complicate it. Keep it simple. Kiss it. Keep it simple and stupid. Um, and final is they do not leverage technology. Guys, have a, a traditional campaign, phone banking, uh, direct mail, radio, TV, all that stuff. Have that traditional strategy. Saturation. Exactly. Have that traditional strategy, but also implement social media, digital campaigns within your political campaign for, for your election. Um, that will go a long way. They are very inexpensive, and it's actually much easier to target the voters digital with this new technology. Um, guys, as always, if you have any questions whatsoever, please give us a call, 305-860-1010, 305-860-1010, or shoot me an email, pedro at diazcampaigns.com. And go vote. Oh, and if you live in the city of Miami, District 3, Little Havana, Shenandoah, and the Rhodes area, go out and vote. Election day is on Tuesday. It's a runoff election. This so, coming Tuesday is uh, what day is that? Uh, that's the 20... That's uh, two days before Thanksgiving, no? That's the 21st. That's the 21st. The 21st. So um, go out and vote, guys. Once again, as always, this is the Campaign Grind Podcast. Uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I am Pedro Diaz. I am your host. Until next week, signing out.